Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. Friends, you always ask me what will be the cost of HIV cure when it arrives. I've been dodging that question for quite a while. Uh, I see it on the comments always. Today I'm presenting my analysis uh, and in the end I'll give you my best answer. But please do not skip forward because this is a very complicated topic. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible because I'm no pricing expert. You need to understand how the pricing consideration weigh towards the potential pricing. And um, that said, let's get started. Welcome back, friends. How do you price a therapy? Well, it's um, if it's for common core, let us say, for example, then I guess that it will be cost plus profit with a constraint of competing products of the same potency and convenience. So that's how uh, I think such a product would be priced. However, when it comes to chronic diseases that do not have a cure yet, how does one go about pricing them? We all know that in a capitalistic market, demand and supply determine pricing. And pricing in turn determines profitability. If a product is not profitable, it's not produced. So that's how capitalism works. ART probably followed that logic and is now providing us a base for a consideration of a permanent cure. For those that are intellectually curious, I suggest that you Google the ICER study for pricing of once and done cure for sickle cell disease. They arrived at a price tag of around 2.04 million uh, to be a viable price for the therapy. And in order to do that, they considered uh, the average lifespan of a person suffering from sickle cell disease on conventional uh, treatments and transfusions, and also the other costs that come through the management of sickle cell disease in terms of side effects and um, lost productivity and all those things. And then they arrived at $2.04 million. It's a very interesting study and it's got a lot of mathematics in it and I have never been uh, good in mathematics so I skipped and glossed over it but generally uh, I got a gist of how they calculate it. So I would recommend that you Google and look at ICER pricing for uh, sickle cell disease uh, to have better understanding of what it could be for, uh, what it could be for HIV. That said, let us first look at current costs. I am using data from HIV.gov source. As per HIV.gov, a 2015 study using 2012 healthcare expenditure data estimated that the discounted lifetime medical cost for an individual who acquires HIV at the age of 35 is uh, 326,500 or 597,300 undiscounted. With 60% of the cost uh, attributable to ART, this is the first data point at an individual level. Later on, we'll look at a uh, data point uh, from the government perspective. Let me explain discounted and undiscounted cost first. Undiscounted cost uh, refers to the actual uh, nominal cost associated with treating a chronic illness or a specific period without adjusting for the time value of money. It doesn't take into account the fact that the value of money changes over time due to factors such as inflation, or the opportunity cost of using funds for healthcare instead of investing them. To calculate undiscounted costs, you simply sum up all the costs incurred in treating a chronic illness without applying any adjustments. So in today's dollars, whatever you are spending, you just total it up, and that is, uh, that is the cost that we are talking about as uh, undiscounted cost. For uh, discounted cost, on the other hand, uh, it considers the time value of money, it takes into account the money spent uh, or saved in the future is not as valuable as the money spent or saved today because remember inflation is happening. When inflation happens, the value of money goes down. That's why you have to give more dollars uh, to buy the same thing in future as compared to what you would pay for it today. Therefore, future costs are adjusted to their present value using a discount rate. To calculate discounted costs, you discount each future cost to the present value using a chosen discount rate. And typically, discount rate is the rate of inflation. So if you assume a 3% inflation rate, that could be your discount rate. In healthcare and chronic illness studies, the uh, use of discounted costs is crucial for several reasons. First is comparison over time. Discounted costs allow for a fair comparison 
of cost incurred in different periods of time. So a dollar spent in uh, uh, 1990 uh, as compared to a dollar spent in 2023. If you use uh, discounted cost, then uh, you'd be able to be uh, comparing apples to apples. Otherwise, uh, it's not going to look, um, yeah, the comparison will not be accurate. And in order to understand the true financial implications of uh, intervention or treatment over long term, governments have to do the calculation of discounted cost. And uh, in summary, while undiscounted costs provide a simple view of expenses, discounted co costs offer a more comprehensive and financially accurate uh, assessment considering the time value of money and the long-term financial implications of treating chronic illnesses. Okay, let's get back to the two data points we have here for ART. A discounted cost of 326,500 and undiscounted cost of 597,300. And we should consider the undiscounted cost, but uh, give the given the inflation we have faced post-COVID, I suspect that it will be way more than 597,300 now because during the post-COVID inflation period, inflation went up to as much as 7%, and earlier it was in the range of 2 to 3%. So there is a factor of 2 out there. So uh, I would put a lot of caution on 597,300. Next, at the government level, the estimated total direct expenditure for HIV between 2002 and 2011 was uh, 10.7 billion annually, which is 800% uh, to 900% higher than similar expenditure for other chronic conditions. These guidelines first included an antiretroviral cost, and since then the overall cost of for brand name first line ARV, um, that is antiretroviral regimens, have increased by more than 30% from 2012 to 2018, which is 3.5 times the rate of inflation for that same period. And we don't have uh, the latest data as of 2023, but it's going to involve even higher inflation. So the cost will be much uh, higher, in my opinion, if you are to look at that metrics. Total annual undiscounted spending on ARV drugs has more than doubled since 2010, reaching $22.5 billion in 2018 for the government. Uh, consequently, ART was among the top five therapeutic classes in non-discounted spending on medication in 2018 after medications for diabetes, autoimmune diseases, cancer, and respiratory uh, disorders. So here we have an individual cost value of 597,000, which is the undiscounted cost. And this is what we have to consider. Data between 2012 to 2018 shows that the US government spent 25,000 to 39,670 per head on ART per year. For people with HIV on long-term ART with high CD4 cell counts, life expectancies are estimated to be close to those of the general population, regardless of when they started ART. However, for people with HIV with low CD4 cell counts, estimates of remaining life expectancy are up to 30 years lower than in the general population indicating the importance of early diagnosis and sustained treatment. The average American has a life expectancy of 79 years as of now. So if we were to assume that an average age of HIV infection is 35 years and then deduct that from 79, we get 44 years of uh, ART treatment and uh, all the associated costs at a discounted uh, cost of 25,930 to 39,670 we can work out a total cost uh, to government per capita of 1.14 uh, million to 1.7475 million uh, so at the base we are looking at 1.14 million to 1.75 million US dollars per patient. This is discounted cost. If we were to add future value with uh, inflation uh, at the rate of uh, 3% per annum, we'll get the undiscounted cost and that figure will be much higher. I think this will be uh, the economics for the government if they decide to bulk source and supply to patients uh, that are currently consuming ART. If we look at the individual level, remember we had cost value of uh, $597,000, uh, uh, which is the undiscounted cost, and this is what we have uh, to consider. So in the private uh, market, I expect pricing to be aspiring to this level. However, when it comes to healthcare, we as a society do not just look at the uh, money factor. There are other considerations. Preventing new HIV infection is priceless. The, uh, and to do that, uh, currently infected people need to be treated. If a cure is available, then the government will extend itself to subsidize the cure uh, to save potential future costs of funding incremental 
uh, HIV patients. We also have non-governmental organizations that take a keen interest in eradicating diseases to ensure good uh, quality of life for everyone. They typically operate in the developing and underdeveloped uh, countries and will be very active in subsidizing and providing that cure. In my opinion, the economics of HIV cure will require a lot of maturity on part of all stakeholders uh, because it has taken many decades to come to a stage where a cure is imminent. Uh, Ideally, when all patients are treated, uh, there should be no more HIV and the therapy will probably go into cold storage for an emergency. Uh, and uh, that being the case, the creators of therapies also need to be uh, adequately compensated for meeting a dire need of the world, uh, undertaking all kinds of risks uh, in order to succeed. So what do I think would be the cost of a total cure? Well, uh, it could uh, depend on the country that you live in. Uh, if you are in an isolated country, you may get it last and it may probably end up costing you a lot. However, those in G7 can reasonably expect to be treated by the government. And um, I, the WHO and MPP will swing into action asking for generics. Uh, here, MPP stands for Medicines Pat uh, Patent Pool. They have already negotiated for Cabinua and that's how Cabinua is coming to India and Africa. Uh, and um, uh, they, they generally swing into action. At that stage, in my opinion, the developers of the therapy need to get a fair shake or else future innovation for other diseases will be severely hampered. The objective of WHO and MPP would be to distribute the therapy to poorer countries and developing countries. It will also depend on what kind of government your country has. If it's a government that is very proactive and professional, you would uh, get it first and uh, probably with a decent subsidy because they would recognize the value of preventing future infection and the amount of money that will be saved because of that as, as well as the productivity. So in conclusion, I think government may provide uh, it free of cost to, to very poor and may charge some money to those that are well off. Uh, what I'm suggesting is there could be some kind of a means testing uh, done uh, even in the G7 countries in order to uh, make sure uh, that the government dollars which are available goes to the most needy and people who are able to afford are uh, uh, stretched uh, just about enough uh, that they can afford and uh, therefore it will relieve the government of that much extra pressure and that money can go towards the ones who really don't have any money to give for the treatment. So some means testing might happen even in the g -sons. And for uh, individuals buying the therapy directly from the company, I think they will probably end up paying close to $2 million. This is my guess. I am sure that as the cure nears, ICER will publish viable costs for the therapy. That would be a guideline for the pricing. I hope you all got some valuable information and food for thought. Let me also caution you that I am not a pricing expert, but I think the methodology I have used is simplistic and is based on genuine data that I could source at my level as a regular individual without access to a um, lot of uh, data that governments might have or experts might have. Experts may have a more refined calculation where they may factor in undiscounted cost of treating future infections as well as uh, lost productivity cost of treating side effects and, and cost of treating side effects of ART. And that figure would be even more competitive and that will be even more reasonable. They may have other factors that may they may consider that I can't even imagine. And they would also do fancy mathematics, which I have uh, avoided. For instance, I have not calculated the actual um, uh, discounted costs uh, by myself. I'm just spitballing or doing a ballpark uh, number out there. Therefore, assume my cost estimates to be a rough estimate and the real uh, estimate would come from ICER when either EBT-101 or AGT-103-T approaches the BLA submission stage. For the uninitiated, BLA stands for Biologics License uh, Application, which is what EBT or AGT will have to do uh, in order to get approved. So they will go through preclinical trials, which they have completed, and they will go into uh, uh, phase one clinical trial, then go to phase two clinical trial, and then they would submit a BLA. And uh, they will have a PDUFA date uh, from the FDA when uh, FDA will consider uh, all the data that they have provided from all the preclinical clinical trials, uh, phase one, phase two, and um, all the information and filled up all the forms of the BLA. And uh, the FDA may at that time decide to have external experts, which is also called as ADCOM, 
to join uh, and give them a recommendation to review all the BLA and give them recommendation uh, or uh, FDA may decide that it doesn't need an ad comma it will decide so the moment the BLA submission starts and I suspect that EBT 101 will have a rolling BLA submission so as soon as the rolling BLA submission uh, activity approaches I think um, uh, ICER will start uh, doing a value analysis of uh, this therapy and they will come up with a number which they consider to be value for money for this kind of therapy and in which they will do actual calculation of all the things that I spoke about plus more. Uh, they will look at all the problems that HIV uh, patients face when they are taking ART and their normal lifespan. And uh, yeah, so, uh, so coming back to uh, what I wanted to also mention is that we are an evolved society, right? We are not like animals. We are an evolved society. When it comes to healthcare, this is where it's very difficult because if you have a cure, somebody is suffering, you can never say that you're not going to get the cure. Society has to find a way uh, to make sure that the, the person who is suffering gets the cure. So I'm pretty confident that something or the other is going to happen and there'll be all, even, I think, Bill Gates and uh, Foundation and all those things might come into play and subsidize wherever possible for the most vulnerable. And those who can pay will be requested to pay a little out of their pocket so that the others who uh, cannot pay can be subsidized by the government. So that said, my friends, um, I would like to end this video here because um, uh, this is the best that I could come up with in terms of my thoughts on uh, what the pricing could be. Uh, so please put your thoughts in the comment section. I would be very keen to hear from you. And um, do not take my numbers very seriously because these are all just an attempt to answer the frequently asked questions in the comment section. How much is it going to cost? Uh, I'm just putting some thoughts out there. Uh, whatever I'm saying here is not going to be the price of the HIV therapy. It's going to be based on uh, a lot of calculations uh, and a lot of uh, other consideration over and above what I have taken. So what else do I have to say about this? So that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please put your comment and please do not uh, forget to put a like out there so that many other people like yourself who are looking for this kind of information can discover our channel. Because there are many out there who have not discovered our channel. The more likes I get here, the more YouTube will farm out this video uh, to people such as yourself so that they can also benefit. With that said, I would recommend seriously that if you are already a subscriber, please consider becoming a member to support the channel so that we can do more serious work and uh, bring you more uh, HIV programming. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.